Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to be talking about my top five things I look for when it comes to choosing and buying an art book, as well as giving you some examples of art books that I've purchased and own uh, currently. So number one, the first thing I look for when I'm looking for an art book or, or if an art book catches my eye, think about what's the purpose of the book. That could mean a couple of things. The purpose of the book could be a sort of a teaching tool, teaching vice, like it could be teaching you composition or it could be uh, teaching you the history about this artist, say if it was an artist that's just from a long, long time ago. What's the purpose of this book? Is it teaching me something or is it just entertaining me sort of thing? So what's the purpose of the book? That's the first thing I look for. Second thing, uh, this might seem very obvious, uh, but do I love the artist? <laughs> and uh, you know, this might sound very obvious, but it's mainly to do with artists that are still alive now and they're putting out their art books and stuff like that. And I'll see their art book and uh, I'm like, oh, that art book does look really great. Um, but you know, I'm not that big of a fan of the artist. Do you love the artist? Or are you just grabbing the art book just to add the, to the collection? Which is fine. I mean, if you want to do that, go for it. But for me, I want to just keep that in mind. Okay, do I really love the artist? Uh, do their work speak to me? If yes, then of course I want to have that art book, but I um, don't really like their artworks, their artworks don't really speak to me, then there's no point of me grabbing the art book, even if the art book does look really cool. Third thing I think about is the quality great. Is the quality great? Now, this is something that often happens with older artists, uh, artists that you know died hundreds of years ago. You'll see this in like nearly every second bookshop that you'll find. You always see these little catalog-esque type of cheap little coffee table uh, art books of these artists. They're just really not great. I've seen some of these little coffee table type of books. Like I've seen some of these paintings in real life and the color matching of these paintings printed in the little books matches nothing to real life. Do not want the this painting to look completely different in the art book than what it does in real life. You want it to be one for one. You want it to match the one, the colors, the values, everything to match. Uh, so quality is a big, big thing. And uh, quality in the writing too, because sometimes they're just not reliable, which leads me into my next thing. So number four, is the source reliable? Is who you're getting the book from a reliable source? Or are they just like this little knockoff shop, knockoff book sort of thing? They've copy and paste some bio crap from like Wikipedia, slapped in a couple of like Google images of the artist and put it in a little coffee table book, you know. And sometimes these look really nice, but you know, they're just not reliable. You know, they're not from credible historians, credible art historians. And number five, is it worth it? I was tossing out between whether to put this one in here or to put another thing in here. But you know, when I'm thinking about art books, this question comes up in my mind, talking about, is it worth it to you? You know, this can, you know, you're gonna have to gauge this for yourself. I can't say whether an art book is worth it for you or not. But for me, when, when I'm looking at things, I look back on the last four that I just talked about, how much I love this artist, how much, uh, it, what's the quality like in this book, you know? So all four kind of really come into this last fifth, uh, fifth question, is it worth it? And um, I really start to think about, you know, the price tag and you know, that, you know, cause art books can get pretty expensive, man. They get they get well up past hundreds. I'm gonna give you a couple examples here. I've got a bunch of art books here that I wanna run you through. These are some of my favorite ones that I have. Um, they're not all the ones I have, but these are my absolute favorites. So I'll run you through uh, sort of the listing of uh, why I bought the book, how it's valuable to me, how it provides value to me, uh, why it was worth it for me to grab, um, stuff like that. So give you a bunch of examples as we go through here. So one of the first art books I ever got was this Jeremy Mann volume 1.7 sketchbook. It's uh, Jeremy Mann is a fantastic artist. I've really, really loved his artworks since I was, since I was very young actually. And uh, I've been really meaning to get his painting volumes uh, on his, on his um, website, but the shipping, man, the shipping is like a hundred bucks to get it to Australia. That's the crap thing about living in Australia, man, is that the shipping, from anywhere in the world, always sucks, always sucks. <laughs> but um, I did get this, get this sketchbook one. So uh, you'll see it in a, another camera angle here, but it's just full of his, of his different sketches and things like that. And uh, it's just like, he's compiled a bunch of his sketchbooks into this, what's called sketchbook volume 1.7. Um, so he's compiled a whole range of his different sketchbooks and stuff like that. 
into this one uh, art book, which when I saw it, I just thought it looked so sick. So why don't, when I talk about these books, I'll run through uh, the uh, questions that I asked myself when I bought these books. So what was the purpose of this art book, this uh, Jeremy Mann art book? The purpose for me was that I just wanted to have a Jeremy Mann uh, art book in my hands, really, because I really love the artist and his works really speak to me. And so that goes with the other ones like that. So do I love the artist? Uh, which, uh, is this from a reliable source? Of course it is. It's from Jeremy Mann himself. Um, and, uh, you know, is it worth it? More than definitely. It's uh, what I wanted from it was just to be able to flick through and see Jeremy Mann's like pretty much like a, it's like an in look little sneak peek into his like sketchbooks like right in my very hand. So it was super worth it for me. Next one up is the uh, Edgar Payne composition of outdoor painting. A lot of artists have this book and I've, I'm like, I'm only half, not even halfway through this book yet, but um, it's such a, oh man, it's, I, I can't recommend this book enough uh, for what it, how much I've read so far and the lessons it's already taught me. This book is really, really fantastic and, and I feel like I got so much out of it already. Very expensive book to get here, <laughs> but uh, I think it's more than worth it. It's taught me so many uh, valuable lessons and uh, the, the main purpose of me grabbing this book was for it to teach me a lot of things and, and it's been doing that, it's really great. And the next one I got is uh, Michelangelo, Divine Draftsman and Designer. Uh, it's a book about all of his um, drawing. It goes into depth about the way he constructed all of his drawings and the way he, where he put his drawings together and uh, some sort of brief history and overview of Michelangelo about like uh, his, his life and uh, the way that, you know, he's constructed his drawings and uh, uh, what, he, what he uses his drawings for and, to, and a brief overview of the life he lived. The purpose of this book was because I really enjoy Michelangelo's uh, drawings and I really wanted to have uh, at the ready, just a really reliable source put together by a bunch of incredible historians. Um, so I know that all the facts in this, everything they're telling me is a 100% credible source. Uh, and uh, just to be able to see such high quality images of his drawings firsthand, just in this art book, uh, this was more than worth it for me just for that. Next one up, Johnson Sargent, Figures and Landscapes, 1908 to 1913. So this one, I just, I really wanted to have a book with John Singh Sargent's uh, paintings in it, both like his watercolors and his oil paintings. Um, and this one's like a little bit after when he stopped doing those portraits for a time and went did his landscapes. So this was a really interesting read. This is a bit more into his career. I think this is the eighth volume in the series. Uh, this is such a great book. It's just full of, of just credible, historically accurate, uh, information put together by really great everything you read in here you just know really researched done their homework and uh alongside it is such a beautiful quality full of like great reference images and uh, images of his work with so much great information in it uh really really love this love this book next one up is probably one of the earliest art books i ever got i got this with another one which is sitting over there but um this this art book is is incredible it's uh robert hagen's cherished moments this art book just goes through like a whole bunch of his his artworks they're so beautiful he's kind of like a realist impressionist painter um i love his artworks and i always have uh, since i was a kid such beautiful work and, and i love the stories that he gives with each and every single work here um, he gives such really great stories and poems to go along with these paintings uh, just makes this whole book such a beautiful beautiful read um, it's just a really great experience to flick through this, see such beautiful paintings and read such incredible stories. It's really moving quite a lot of these stories and, and it really moves me to tears, uh, some of these stories and the paintings that go along with them. Um, I just I just love this book, it's beautiful. Next one up, Alfonso Mucha. Mucha is such an incredible artist. He's so unique uh, in what he does in the way that he does it, especially for what time period he was alive in. Um, and like, oh God, this book is just chock full of like all of his artworks and, and just full of such really great, uh, really great information about his artworks, really great information about uh, his life and that he led and like uh, synopsis of like uh, 
what he was doing when he made this artwork and why he made this artwork and all those sorts of things and a little bit about his processes and stuff like that. He's just such a unique artist that I just thought, look, I, I have to get a book on Mucha. I, I just I just love the way that he the way that he paints, the way that he puts things together, the way he designs things. So beautiful. Uh, this book just it's just a sort of beautiful art book from an artist that I really admire. So that's kind of my reason of, of grabbing it. <laughs> this, this is along with uh, a couple of other ones there. This is probably another one of my earlier art books that I got. Uh, it's Tom Roberts. Tom Roberts is, uh, if you're not Australian, you might have heard of him. But if you are Australian, you, you've definitely heard of him. Uh, Tom Roberts, you've definitely seen this one if you're Australian. Um, Tom Roberts is an incredible Australian artist. Pretty sure he was like a uh, English Australian. He wasn't born here, he came from England to live here and work here. It just documents his life, really, and his practices, and then his, his paintings, and talks about his paintings individually with like really, really beautiful, beautiful uh, images and high quality images and quality craftsmanship that went into the book here uh, and putting everything together with like all the information. Uh, it's such a well put together book um, with such great uh, care and thought put into the the making of this book and uh, uh, this has probably been one of my favorites and and, and uh, talking about the uh, quality of the book thank god it's had uh, the hardcover that it does because I've had to I've been like treating it so rough since I've got it since day one like trying to pin it up to my easel and stuff like that pin it up to the boards and look at the paintings within it and try and paint from them this uh, yeah I'm just I'm very glad that this book is hardcover so it's, it's still alive today <laughs> One of my more recent books that I've got, uh, actually this year, I'm pretty sure, or last year, is the um, John Singer Sargent Portraits in Charcoal book. It's, uh, man, it's definitely one of my, it's probably probably my third favorite book that I own, uh, just from the amount of incredible information in here and the quality of the pictures in here too. Just fantastic, so amazing. It goes from like, gives you sort of like synopsis about his life, uh, about his uh, portrait drawing life and why he started doing portrait drawing as like a final form of artworks and stuff like that. And then it just does something amazing and just catalogs like pretty much all, all the uh, public record uh, drawings that they have. Um, and some from private collections, I think. Uh, I think they have a couple of them but um, just documents all of them. It gives you like a really beautiful synopsis about the person, who the person is, what they did with their lives, uh, how Sergeant knew them. Um, it's just an incredible book and seeing his charcoal drawings is such a beautiful, high quality, crisp image is, uh, is something so beneficial. And like I've worked from these images as well, like trying to replicate them on, on paper side by side. Uh, there's such a beautiful high quality that you can really do that uh, such a such a great book uh, and that's why it just ranks up there as number th top three for me my second all-time favorite book would be my most recent purchase actually is the Soroya catalog uh, Rizone uh, I can't really pronounce that too much too well but it's a very it's a brand new book put together by uh, Soroya's granddaughter and uh, it's a full-on catalog of the museum Soroya in uh, Spain, it's, it's such a, it's a full catalog of all their Soroya paintings that they have at his home museum. It's the uh, studio museum, the last studio he ever lived in and worked in, they've converted that into a museum. And this is a full on catalog documenting all the works that they have there in the museum. It's so well documented, so well put together. The quality is absolutely amazing. And the, uh, it goes through by date, it goes from like earliest that they have to latest that they have and just such great information about these paintings and great inform great quality about these paintings too uh, it's just it's such a beautiful book so well done so well put together and there's actually going to be i think three more that uh she's going to put together of soroya i think one's going to be his seascapes one's going to be his exhibited works and uh, I can't remember what the other one's gonna be, but it's such a it's such a big book too, full of all the works they have. It's like a full catalog of them. And uh, that's why I love it. That's why it's number two, man. Uh, because Sororia is my number one favorite. <laughs> this is gonna be not my number one favorite book, I think. Um, Sororia, The Masterworks. 
Um, if, if, <laughs> if you've only been following me for a short period, you might not know this, but Soroya is probably my favorite artist to ever live. Uh, just from the way that he paints, the way that he constructs his paintings, uh, down to the subjects of his paintings, uh, just everything about his paintings, I just absolutely love. I just love everything about these paintings <laughs> and it gets me so psyched to talk about them. But this book is such a great book because not only does it have like actual photographs of, of, of Soroya working, which is incredible to see and I love that so much, but it's also got such beautiful high quality images of his paintings. And the whole book just follows through his life beginning to end. And it's just a really, really great read because you can go through it and it reads really, really well. It reads great. It reads like a story, really. Uh, but it's a historically accurate story, you know, along with all these beautiful paintings and everything set out beginning to end. That's why it's my number one favorite, just because, not because, not, not just because Story is my favorite artist, but because this book is just so well put together. So if you like that, please let me know. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video, if you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see an update video when I get more books. <laughs> let me know about some of the books that you have in your collection down in the comments below. I'd love to read that. Uh, hear your recommendations as well if you've got a couple of favorites. These are not all of my uh, favorite artists. I have a lot more favorite artists that I don't own uh, copies of their art books, um, which I'm trying to get together. I think it's really important for artists to have their own library of art books that they can just draw on at any time. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we're working away, working away, and, and uh, it's nice to have that little bit of inspiration just sitting there in our studio that we can just pick up, flick through, and re just remind us of why we love to paint. <laughs> because it can, get, it can get a bit much sometimes, and uh, having these art books around just makes it so beautiful. I really love it. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell once you hit subscribe so you get notified every time I upload. But the most important thing you can do right now, right this second, is go to my website, go to the sign up section on there, sign up to my uh, email listing. That way you get 24 hour early access to these videos here on YouTube, as well as access to all my reference photos that I've used for uh, all the videos you've seen here, uh, some of the locations I've been to, and uh, some of the people I've painted. Other than that, everybody, I will see you all in the next video. Catch you all.